So one of the things that makes a paper planner so wonderful is the tabs that allow you to quickly jump to different months. And whenever you turn those tabs on a real planner, all the tabs that have previously become are now on the left and the ones that are still to come are on the right. However, many times with digital planners, the tabs do not move. They all stay on one side, either on the top or along the left or the right, but usually they don't move. However, there is a way to make a digital planner work just like this paper planner. So in this video, I'll be walking you through the steps I use to create this digital planner that has tabs that move from one side to the other. And as I click on the sections, you'll see the tab that I've clicked on becomes highlighted and the tabs move from left to right just like they would on a regular planner. So today we'll be showing you how to do that. Before we begin, make sure you take a minute to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Let's jump in. If you're new to my channel, make sure you take a minute to check out the video I'm linking above where I walk through the steps of creating your very first digital planner. I'm gonna fly through this beginning part because a lot of what I'm doing right now is covered in that previous video. So your first step is to simply get the basics down for your digital planner. So just like before, I'm gonna jump into my master slides and I'm gonna establish my first slide that's gonna have my cover, my paper, and all my tabs going down the right. All right, so as we finish up, it's almost time to start making these tabs turnable. A lot of what we've done before is the first steps of what we did in making previous planners. We haven't linked anything yet, but we have gotten everything set up. So Keynote builds master slides for all types of different content that you could be presenting, and we're gonna use that today to help make our master slides for each section of our planners. So I'm gonna copy and paste what I have and move it up to another master slide, but I'm gonna change this one to make it look like the first section of my planner. So to do that, I'm gonna move the first tab over, I'm going to rotate the word section. So this will be the first section that has section one on the left and all the other sections on the right. I'm also going to highlight this tab. And this is just a personal choice. You can either keep them the same or not, but this way it just makes it stand out a little bit more as the tab that we are currently on. And now I have a master slide set up for my first Now section. what I need to do is continue using these master slides that Keynote uses. And for each one, I'm just deleting what's already in there and then copying and pasting from that original. And this will now be my section two master slide. So again, I'm gonna move over the tab and the text, except this time I'm gonna do it for section one and section two. Now, since this will be my section two, I'm gonna leave the section one tab the same color, but when I bring over the section two tab, I'm gonna pull that same darker purple that I used for section one on the previous page. Another little trick in Keynote, when you use the little color grabber, you can actually drag and drop this square into your panel below, which means now I'll have this color to grab whenever I want. So I'm gonna simply click on that square, drag it over, and now whenever I need that color, it'll be right there at the bottom so I don't have to worry about matching the color every single time. So I'm gonna jump back down to my section two tab and click on that tab, and then that color is right there ready for me to grab. So now I have my section one all lined up and my section two lined up. And I'm gonna actually copy and paste from this section so I don't have to move as much next time. So I'm gonna do control A and then control C or command if you're on a Mac. Go down to my next slide, delete what's there and paste it on. Now this will be my section three tab. So I need to change this color back to what it was before. And now I need to move my section three over and just like before, change the color. So this is essentially the process I'm gonna be using just to get my planner started. Notice I'm always in my master slides right now and I'm gonna show you why I do that in just a minute. And I'm just getting essentially the first page of each section mapped out. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit as I finish up section four and section five. All 
All right, so I'm finishing up section five and now I have a master template set up for each section of my planner. So I have section one, section two, section three, section four, and section five. Each time the tabs move over one at a time and it highlights the tab run. So I'm gonna click done. And you'll notice the first slide has already pulled in one of those templates. And I'm gonna go through and add in one for each. So notice when I click add slide, all of my templates that I used are already up there. So now I have slides one through five all set up and they're there to represent the first page of each section. Once I have all five down, I'm going back into my planner and this is probably the most tedious step. I now need to go in and build the links. You can't build the links until you have some base slides in there because you can't tell it to go to slide two if there is no slide two. So just like I did when I built a planner without turning tabs, I'm going to each one, I'm right clicking, I'm clicking add a link, and then I'm putting the slide that it needs to go to. Unfortunately, one of the things that makes turnable tabs harder to build is you're gonna have to do this for each one of your master slides. Now the good news is in a few minutes I'm gonna show you how you can duplicate those links once you have your five initial master slides set up. So I've got the first section all linked up and then I go down to my next one and again I'm building in the links for each one. I'm going to continue doing this all the way till section five. For every single master slide I have, I need to go in and put in those links. A little helpful hint, sometimes it can be hard to remember what sections are what. In this planner, it is a pretty simple planner because it just has five sections. However, I have built planners that have 20 sections and sometimes tabs along the top and tabs along the bottom, um, and they all have different names, so I can't just rely on section one, section two, section three, section four, section five. So one thing I like to do is I actually create a little cheat sheet for myself where I map out the page numbers of each slide. And the key is when you're building it out, just start with one page per section. We will add pages in a second, but if you have one page per section, then you, you can create a little doc or a post note that essentially says slide one is this tab, slide two is this tab, etc. That way you just have it right next to you ready to go. All right, now that I have put links on all of my master slides, I'm gonna click done and go back to my planner. And now you'll see all five slides that I originally put down there. You'll see those little blue arrows that show you that the links are officially live on each one of those pages. Now, because we built these master templates, we're actually going to get a chance to duplicate and add as many pages as we want. So if we want section one to have another page, I'm just gonna duplicate that first slide. And what's really cool is Keynote is smart enough to figure that out and it adjusts all the links. So don't worry about the fact that your slide two is now different because Keynote actually adjusted everything down. So I can show you in my master slides, section two is actually now slide three. Section three is now slide four, et cetera. And you'll see that shift happened everywhere. So when you add pages, Keynote shifts it. And this is why I start with just one page at a time, because now I can add as many pages as I, as I want to section one and all of my links are still gonna go to the right sections. And again, I can do the same thing in section two. So again, if I add more pages and now I look at my section two link, it now says slide five. So you can really add as many pages as you want to as many sections as you want. So if you want some sections that are really long, that is totally up to you. I have had a few people ask me how long you can make a planner when you import it into GoodNotes. And I will tell you at this point, I have yet to find a limit. I do have planners that are hundreds of pages long. My only word of advice to you is the longer the planner and the more stickers and things you start to put in them, the planners can get a little laggy in GoodNotes. And what that means is it just takes a few seconds to load each page rather than seamlessly flipping from one page to the other. So now I have a planner that is several pages long and all the links are leading to the next section and as I go to the different sections, my tabs are gonna move over. So I want to jump into GoodNotes real quick and just to 
quick reminder. Um, I've done videos on this on the past. All you do is export it as a PDF and then move it into your iPad. So here we go. Here's my planner and you'll see as I swipe through those first few pages, it jumps into section two and all of those links are ready to go and you can click on any one of them and the tabs are gonna move over. So if I click on section one, all my tabs are gonna be on this side section five, all my tabs will be on the left. And now we have a digital planner that has tabs that move just like a paper planner does. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you continue to ask questions as you're doing your digital planning. I love making videos that you guys want to see. I have a plan for the future to make a video on how to do all this on your iPad because many people have asked me. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time.